Hello, Mr. Bainey here. Let's practice some more solving systems of equations using substitution. Just to review, a system of equations are two equations that have two variables. When we solve for it, we are solving for both the x and the y, and the solution is going to come out to something that looks like a point, a coordinate that has an x, comma, y. Number one, We uh, first want to look for an x equals something or a y equals something. That means either x or y is by itself in the equation. In this case, we have a y equals this thing right here. So we're going to substitute, substitute that for y. We're substituting it for y because it's equal to y right here. So you want to look for the other y in the other equation. So since it's equal to y, we look for the other y right here. And we're going to substitute that 6x minus 11 right there. And see what's happening with this y. It's multiplying with this minus 3 right here. So this gets a little bit tricky. But we're going to write negative 2x minus 3 times, instead of y, we're putting 6x minus 11. And that's going to equal negative 7. This is the very first step in knowing how to use the substitution method. From here, it's about knowing how to solve an equation for x. So I'm actually going to move on to the next problem, and I'll come back to this one. But I want to I just first want to show you just this first step. Let's look at number two. Again, you want to look for an x equals something or a y equals something. That means that x, y is by itself. So we have a y by itself in the second equation. It's right here. y equals this thing. So circle this with me. x minus 1, we're going to substitute that for y. because it's equal to y. So we just look for the other y in the other equation. All right, if, this, if it was equal to x, we would be substituting in here for the x. But it's equal to y. So instead of minus 3 times y, it's minus 3 times this thing right here. So here we go. We write 2x minus 3 times, instead of y, it's times x minus 1 equals negative 1. Okay, and the substitution there is done. That we can go through and we can solve it. Let's look at the next one, number 3. Just do a couple more here, then we'll go back and we'll solve one of these. Here again, we look for x equals something or y equals something. We have a y equals this thing right here. So we're substituting this thing that we circled for y. So we look for the other y. We have uh, 5x minus 4. Instead of y, it's times negative 3x plus 5 equals negative 3. On all of these, I'm only writing down what I substitute in that red color. What's in blue is just copied from that equation, or for, from one of the equations. Okay, so I just did substitution on that one. And let's do one more before I go back and solve one of these. Here we have, we actually have both equations that have y by itself, but I'm just going to choose one of them because we substitute from one into the other. So y is equal to this thing. So I'm going to substitute for y because it's equal to y. All of these is just coincidence. We'll uh, look for another one that has x. So I can show you that it, it works for both x and y. But this is equal to y. So I'm going to look for this other y right here. Instead of y, I write x plus 1. 
And I just copied the rest of that. E equals negative 5x minus 17. Then I can go and solve that. All right, let's go back to number one and actually solve this. So I'm going to draw my line going all the way down. Uh, what I need to do is take this negative 3 right here, and we have to distribute inside, distribute, distributive property, negative 3 times the 6x and negative 3 times negative 11. There's lots of mistakes here because of that minus sign in front of the 3. But we're supposed to get minus 18x and then plus 33 because it's like saying it's like saying negative 3 times negative 11. So you can see right here negative 3 and negative 11. And that gives us a positive 33. I still have just negative 7 on the other side. Next, I have negative 2x and negative 18x. That's going to give us negative 20x if I put them together. Since they're on the same side, they're like terms. It equals negative 7x. Then subtract 33 on both sides. I get negative 20x equals negative 40. And finally, divide by negative 20. And x is 2. Right? Negative 40 divided by negative 20 is positive 2. So we're done, right? But we still need to find y. We're only halfway done, really. Even though this is uh, uh, the longer part of the problem, the longest part of the problem, because finding the y is not going to be as difficult. I'm going to use that first equation, the one that I circled part of, y equals 6x minus 11. And the nice thing here is, I already know what x is. x is 2, so this is 6 times 2 minus 11. Therefore, y is 12 minus 11, right? 6 times 2 is 12. And finally, y is 1. And I get that. The final answer should be written as a point. It's going to be 2, comma, 1, because it's always x and then y. And that's all there is to it. Just the substitution part is uh, what's new when we first learn this. And then the rest is review. It's the solving equations, just like from module seven. Let's go and find a problem that has something that has solved for x right here, number eight. Let's do this one and we'll go all the way through. So we have an x equal something, x is by itself, it's equal to this thing. Let's substitute that thing for x. See, the x is right there. The other x, I mean. So instead of negative 7 times x, it's going to be negative 7 times this. Here we go. Negative 7. And then when we're substituting this in for the x, I can copy the rest of that equation. Minus 2y equals negative 13. Let's actually go through and solve this. First thing I need to do is substitute, not substitute, but distribute the negative 7 times 2y and negative 7 times 11. And I get negative 14y minus 77 minus 2y equals negative 13. Next, I have like terms, negative 14y and negative 2y gives us negative 16y. And I still have minus 77, and that equals negative 13 still. Next, add 77 to both sides, because it's a minus 77. I get negative 16y equals, that looks like 64, positive 64. And the last step, divide by negative 16. And y is negative 4, it looks like. 
from there, since why uh, we have an answer for y, I'm just going to use the equation that I circled part of, x equals 2y plus 11. Remember, I didn't make up this equation. It's just right here. It's the uh, second equation that's in the problem. Instead of y, I put negative 4. So it goes x equals 2. Remember, instead of y, we put negative 4 plus 11. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then negative 8 plus 11 is positive 3. Our final answer becomes this point negative or positive 3 comma negative 4. If you noticed, we in this problem solve for the y first and then solve for the x, but we still write the x number first, positive 3, and the y number second. If you compare that to number 1, it was the other way around. We did substitution to solve for the x number first, use that to solve for y, still wrote it as the x number first, and then the y number second. My recommendation as you do the rest of this worksheet is if you just want to practice just that first step, the substitution, you can go ahead and do that for all of these problems and then come back and solve them. So just like I've done for number two and number four here, I only did that first step, did the substitution piece, uh, circle what you need to circle that's equal to X or Y, and then find out what you need to substitute it for. If you would like to see the rest of the solutions here, go ahead and uh, pause the video or just end it for now, try out some of these problems, and then uh, I will be showing these answers here in a handful of seconds.